You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, I want to draw your attention to this claim by Trump's lawyer, Alina Haba. Last one, and, and the last one, your case yeah. in New York, where judges said $465 million, you got to come up with it. I think Trump petitioned the court yeah. to say, can I come up with $100 million? And I believe they said, where does that stand? Let's just ask you that. Sure. The attorney general case is on appeal. We're waiting on that decision. We had a good hearing uh, last week on that case. Obviously, the judge, uh, the appellate division saw that there were some issues in the order and, and rectified them. Look, I think that our, our, our appellate, I've said this a million times, I think our appellate case is going to be very strong. We have a good record for appeal. We know that there were decisions that were made in error. We know that there was an appellate division, a division decision that narrowed the statute of limitations, which was completely ignored in the trial court. Um, and like I say all the time, honestly, it, it's time to let our side come out and for the American people How to be patient this? and see what I happened got an today. Idea. And it'll I still all right, so that was in reference to the $455 million fraud verdict against Trump in New York. First of all, she claims that she and Trump have a strong case uh, as they move this case toward appeal. Is that true or is this just wish casting by an attorney who is just as deluded as her client? Yeah, uh, that, that was a bunch of word salad. I especially like when she says, well, our story is finally going to come out. They have been putting their story out in the media. They have been putting their story out in trials that, that lasted weeks, if not months. But now on appeal, their story is finally going to come out. It's a bunch of word salad. It's a bunch of gibberish. They do not have strong issues on appeal. Based on my assessment, what I saw regarding the reporting of the evidence that was introduced that ended up in the massive money judgment against Donald Trump. When you tally it all up, plus interest, it's more than half a billion dollars. And, you know, you really can't believe much of what Elena Haba says. She is the one who has taken Donald Trump down in flames. You know, I, he's been on the receiving end of this enormous money judgment. You know, I thought the first judgment of five million in the E. Jean Carroll was pretty staggering. <laughs> it was I a quaint, that was quaint compared to what we're at now. Pocket change, $5 million, and then $83 million. Uh, and now Elena Haba as virtually lead counsel, even though she was kind of co-counsel with another attorney named Chris Kyes, they lost a massive money judgment for Donald Trump. I can't believe he's all that pleased with them. Um, but no, everything she says, it's more PR for the benefit of those people who listen to Trump's lawyers and are gullible enough to believe anything they say. Well, no, she claims that the appellate division saw some issues in the initial order from the initial trial. What, what's she talking about here? Yeah, so in fairness, remember, there were some issues that kind of bounced back and forth between the trial court and the appellate court. So there was some limiting of the, the um, charges that could be pursued because some of them were so old that they were beyond the statute of limitations. But then the trial court adjusted and made that that um, rectified that situation. Um, I think the appellate court also decided to put on hold, if I'm not mistaken, um, Judge and Goron's order that Donald Trump's business certificates be canceled. I think there is a pause on that limited portion, uh, a less important portion of Judge and Goron's ruling. So yes, there have been some issues that have kicked around, but. You know, these are very minor issues as compared to the massive money judgment that Donald Trump is facing, which he has still not been able to post a bond in order to take a proper appeal. Glenn, does the Trump team risk anything by appealing? Like, can, can New York Attorney General Letitia James recover court fees, for example, because they're being dragged through yet another costly trial? You know, it's a good question. I think the answer is typically no. Ordinarily, you have a right to appeal. You have a right to appeal a criminal conviction. You have a right to appeal a civil judgment like Donald Trump's civil fraud judgment for what is totaling about half a billion dollars. And um, but what you have to do in order to um, secure your right to an appeal is one of two things. You either have to pay out the, the, the winning party. You have to satisfy that money judgment in order to appeal, or you have to take the amount of the money judgment and deposit it with the court, a uh, half a billion dollars. Or if you can't do that, you have to get somebody, I was gonna say some sucker, but I'm just gonna <laughs> stick, stick with somebody to post a bond for you and guarantee that if you lose the appeal, 
you, Donald Trump, are good for that half a billion. Don't worry about it. Donald Trump has not done that yet. So Donald Trump at this moment has not even perfected his ability to appeal. The last um, offer he made, like he's negotiating prices at a, at a flea market, he said, yeah. I know I'm supposed to put up nearly half a billion dollars, more than $500 million. Here's what I'm going to do for you, uh, New York court system. I'll put up a bond for $100 million and you can spot me the rest. That literally is the, the status of his attempt to appeal and his attempt to convince the New York courts that somehow the rules don't apply to him, that apply to everybody else. He doesn't have to put up the whole money judgment or a bond for the entire amount. Let me tell you, the New York courts are not going to reduce the amount that he needs to put up to perfect his right to appeal. But this is a battle that is ongoing because we're still only about a week or so into the 30 day period since Judge Ngoron entered the judgment. And so Donald Trump will be playing this negotiating game and I predict losing this negotiating game until his time runs out. And so when will he get an answer on that? And will that impact this clock at all? Because like you mentioned, we're just about a week and a half into this clock, into this 30 day clock where he has to uh, pay the money that he that he that the, the pay the four hundred and fifty five million dollars. So when he makes these requests, that doesn't stop the clock at all, correct? Absolutely not. He's already lost once. He made an emergency appeal to one appellate court judge asking if he could reduce his bond to 100 million rather than put up the whole amount. That judge instantly said no. And I don't think we have had any other hearing since that judge said no, which happened in, in recent days. But again, we're going to be hearing Donald Trump come up with all kinds of asks of the court. And, and the reason he's doing that is, is because it's absolutely crystal clear he doesn't have the liquid assets that he, ha that he has always claimed he does. He cannot satisfy these money judgments. He can't pay the full amount into the court, so he can't perfect his right to appeal these verdicts. And of course, we've spoken about this before, but can you speak on what happens if he isn't able to pay with any liquid assets? Tish James begins seizing his stuff could use a different word there. She will begin to seize his properties. She will put liens on his properties. She will garnish his wages if he has any wages coming in. She will go aggressively in every way the New York court uh, and the New York state laws allow to satisfy the judgment that she won. That was a hard fought, fought judgment. The amount that Donald Trump has made to pay back, to disgorge that he, he got courtesy of his fraud. Um, so, you know, you're, you're literally potentially going to see Donald Trump's real property, his real estate, his buildings begin to have liens put on them or have them seized outright. And she can begin to sell his assets and, you know, try to satisfy the money judgment. That's going to happen at the end of the 30 day period if Donald Trump can't put up a bond or put up the full amount and deposit it into the court's escrow account. I'm sure those real estate agents across the city are looking forward to that fire sale of Trump Tower. Uh, Glenn, let's let's go back to Alina Hopper for just a moment. Uh, first of all, isn't it not customary that you would use the same attorney who argued in the trial court to then deal with the appeal? And second of all, if she had done such a dismal job that she lost the guy half a billion dollars, why would he bring her on anyway? You know, it's interesting because another attorney was just brought on to the appeal by Donald Trump. It's a guy named John Sauer. Why does that name sound familiar? Well, that's the guy who I watched in court down here in D.C. argue the absolute immunity claim where he infamously now said, yeah, you know what? Donald Trump could order SEAL Team 6 to kill his political opponent and he couldn't be prosecuted unless he was impeached in the House and convicted in the Senate, which is outrageous. It's absurd and you know, arguing affirmatively that a president of the United States ought to be able to kill his political opponents using the military with absolute impunity and immunity against prosecution is, you know, the stuff of nightmares and really bad crime fiction. But this is what this guy, John Sauer, argued. And I could hear the gasps in the audience when I was in the courtroom and he was asserting this. He was just brought on to argue the appeal in, in, the, uh, in the case in New York. So um, yes, 
Elena Haba is still technically on the case. She's still, you know, running her mouth to the media, making all these silly claims, but it doesn't look like she's taking point on the appeal. But to answer your question, Brian, it's not unusual for a, a defendant who loses a case and wants to file an appeal to bring an appellate expert in, somebody who is an expert in appellate litigation, because just because you may be a good trial lawyer, which Elena Haba is not, she didn't even seem to know the rules of evidence, but even if you are a good trial lawyer, that doesn't necessarily make you a good or experienced appellate lawyer. So it's not unusual, but you know, I think it's pretty clear that Elena Haba, after she went down in flames in the trial court, was probably not the best person to also take point on Trump's appeal. And let's finish off with this. Can you speak on the timeline of the appeal? Because we've spoken in the past about how these appeals can take years. Yeah, once the appeal is perfected, in other words, Donald Trump has has deposited the requisite amount or put up the, the bond for the full amount so that he is now entitled to appeal, um, then the court will order a briefing schedule. And so briefs will be filed, reply briefs will be filed by the opposing party. Then the case is often set for oral argument, but an appellate court need not grant oral argument. I was involved with appeals where they um, decided it on the papers, on the motions and the court filings. They didn't feel the need to order oral argument. But if they do oral uh, order oral argument, that will be set months out in, in the future. And then appellate courts can take as much time as they need to decide issues. I will say appellate dockets are generally pretty clogged and pretty backlogged. So I have seen appellate uh, cases linger literally for years even in criminal cases when somebody is serving a sentence. So their liberty interest is involved, and yet appellate courts will still sometimes take a very long time to resolve appeals, even in criminal cases. And in civil cases, I think the incentive to get it decided quickly is even um, is lower than in okay. criminal cases. So this could take a very long time. And of course, the important part is that he will already have to put the money up anyway. So him trying to you know, make this appeal happen is not going to uh, satisfy his initial desire to, to somehow hang on to that money because he's going to have to put up that money either either through a bond or in liquid assets himself. But he's not going to be able to figure out a way to wiggle out of getting that money, uh, getting that money back into his pocket. Yeah, doesn't mean he won't try. But remember, there is also a monitor, a financial monitor, a retired Judge Barbara Jones, who is overseeing Donald Trump's handling of his own assets to guard against him trying to move them around nefariously to avoid them being used to satisfy the money judgment. So um, I think they have Donald Trump's number on this one. Well, well, we'll obviously stay on top of everything that happens here, along with the rest of the prosecutions that Trump is contending with, starting with the criminal trial that's going to begin in Manhattan on March 25th. So for everybody watching right now, if you want to follow along, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.